you do that? Kind of. Nice. I've got to think about it. That's nice. Here you go. <laughs> there you go. Hi, it's Drop Dorian, it's Holly Bennett. Right, now I've come back six times to get this interview since Thank I've you. originally seen the Thank game. You. So we saw the uh, the demo and yep. it was absolutely mind blowing. Now, oh, Star wow. Trek, for those of you who don't know, uh, is the game that we're talking about. Uh, when we uh, got the uh, little email through to come see this game, it was Paramount has a game that's going to change your life, was actually the tagline in the email. So I thought, wow. okay, I've got to go, got to go <laughs> see that game. So we're here and we're going to talk a little bit about it. So, first of all, yes. um, Star Trek, it's a massive universe. So, in which time is this one set? Right, uh, this one is set in the kind of reboot universe and it takes place between the 2009 film and the next film that's coming out. So, it's kind of it was awesome because uh, Bob Orsi was asked, like, what's your favorite thing about the 2009 film? And he's like, oh, well, it's got to be the relationship between Kirk and Spock. And the awesome thing is, he said, and then he segued right into the game. He's like, now you get to play the game and kind of see how that new friendship kind of solidifies and begin to trust each other and the banter between the characters. So we get our own thing. This is an own part of its galaxy. It's not like you're going to be playing through and going deja vu, deja vu as you play through like a film game. It's its own thing. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. This isn't just some movie spin-off, quick, no. thrown-out kind no. of game, is it? Now, I was surprised. Now, when they told us, because the first time the game's been even been announced, a yep. big kind of shock, yep. but you've been working this game for quite a while. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I have no idea how we kept it secret, but we've been working on it for a year and a half. Because you're not with Sony. Sony can't keep anything <laughs> secret. Everybody else can keep a secret. No comment, no comment, no comment. <laughs> so, yeah, a year and a half it's already been. Now, um, right. so it follows on for the movie. Now, let's talk before we do anything. Uh, the characters themselves are actually the, the characters that we know from the movie. You've yes. not just made your own up. Exactly. I mean, that, that's the awesome thing is when we first pitched this game, we said, you know, I know it's really you know near and dear characters, but let's use the most iconic characters ever. They're so different from one another personality-wise, and that's what makes them so complimentary. And it's perfect for a co-op game. So it's Kirk and Spock. I mean, this is the first time in like an action adventure game you get to control like the most iconic science fiction characters ever, in my opinion. No, they are, and I, even I love the movie. I cool, cool. Love the movie. Now, uh, let's talk about the game itself. Yes. Really heavy co-op, so it really oh, is yeah, about absolutely. building this relationship. Absolutely. Um, talk a little bit about what we saw on the demo and some of the things that you do in the game to encourage this building of the relationship and the co-op. Right, I mean, this is kind of like a buddy movie, right? So, you know, there's always, we even looked at things like Lethal Weapon and stuff. There's always these points where one character is completely dependent on the other. So there's that moment in the, in the demo where the, those aliens came in and shot Kirk and he fell down and he couldn't walk. And then Spock came over, picked him up, grabbed him, started dragging him to Med Bay. So there's crazy moments like that. But even like in the combat mechanics, you saw that Federation rifle had that kind of shield on it. And then Spock turned to right, aim right at Kirk and it blasted and charges up the shield with this crazy energy shot. So there's like co-op mechanics as well as like story beats where they're really dependent on each other. Yeah, the story beats are fantastic. They're obviously one part you see like the way the two lands, you know, uh, Spock, nice yeah. and graceful like he yeah, should totally. be, Vulcan yeah. should be, yeah. lands, wonderful Kirk, tumbles head over ass into a pile of blocks. Absolutely. But you see it from each character's point of view. Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, that's why this game, we can say, is kind of built from the ground up for co-op. Most games, even when they support co-op, is the characters are very, very similar to one another. And uh, these guys are so, so yeah. different from one another. And even in the sort of cinematic beats that we're doing, we always make sure we show you Spock perspective on the action and Kirk's perspective on the action. I mean, even the way the game opens and they're on the bridge, we're seeing what, what Spock is experiencing, listening to his first officer's logs, but whereas the Captain Kirk, of course, he has different relationships with the crew members. So we're really actually trying to take, it's easy to be cynical about it, we're actually really taking a swing at people to say, you could actually play this a game again as Spock and see the different split paths, see his perspective on the story, and use his abilities that are way, way different than Kirk's. Yeah, now that's, that's the next part is um, now, fans of Star Trek yes. are pretty particular, they not the most forgiving good. in the world. Yep. Now this game isn't just a great Star Trek game, this is a really accurate game. Yes. And that's one thing you really hammered home in the demo, and one thing that's really got me loving the game was just how awesome. much you've, you've put into this. Talk a little bit about how you've made it accurate, and some of the little things you've done to really get it there right. Uh, well, besides taking our time to get it right, I mean, the amount of access we have, we're working with Bad Robot Productions, Paramount, Chris Norsi Company, Damon Lindelof's crew. I mean, we have all of those people on board. It isn't just like thrown off the wall, uh, thrown over a wall, and then we kind of throw it back. You know, we were talking to the Bad Robot guys, we're like, oh, we're going to be in the shuttle bay for this sequence, we're going to have the shoot on the shuttle bay, and they're like, awesome, well, let's send you the assets. We have access to the set photography, everything behind the scenes, the architectural blueprints for the sets, the CG geometry, you saw that part where the guys were flying through space, that's the ILM model. So again, we have absolutely everything it's going to be, everything we need to make the most authentic Star Trek game ever. Yeah, now, um, one of the things is sort of upgrading weapons, for example. Yes, yes, yes. So we all know our Star Trek phases, stun, kill, yep. stasis. Yep, but yep. obviously even Kirk and Spock, two different weapons. That's right. Uh, yeah. Talk a little bit about how you've made them different. 
Right, so the really cool thing about, about this is, you know, usually the Canon handcuffs are on and you can't change anything. Uh, they're off. In the Reboot universe, when we talk to a bad robot or we talk to, you know, Bob Orsi, we're like, okay, we're thinking about this, is that going to fit? And like, the first question they ask is not, you know, they don't go and look at the Star Trek novels or look at the film, they say, does it get, make the game more fun? And we're like, absolutely it does. I'm like, oh, let's do it. So. Uh, Kirk in this game has like the special issue phaser, a captain's issue phaser. It totally suits his personality. It's bold, it's brutal. And then as he, he upgrades it, rather than kind of bolt on upgrades, the upgrades work in the head. So he realizes how he can tune it and he get this really crazy vaporized shot. And again, the same thing with Spock. He's more subtle, he's more like the stealthy ninja character of, yeah. of the universe. So his, his upgrade path and his special Vulcan weapon kind of focus on greater efficiency, faster fire rate, and that sort of thing that, that, that is, you know, totally fitting for like the Vulcan genius he is. Yeah, no, it looks absolutely fantastic. Obviously, uh, I was going to normally ask about community feedback, but you've kept this so hush-hush. <laughs> yeah. But there is no community feedback yes, yet. Yeah. We're still waiting for that. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's right now, that's all I can want to think of. Anything right. else you want to say to the fans now that the game's been announced? Right. Uh, it's, it's really an amazing, from the ground up, co-op experience. You can play through single player. Your buddy can come over and go, oh, I want to be Spock. You can take over the Spock AI, and you can play through. Maybe he passes out on the couch, the Spock AI continues. Or maybe you want to play as Spock and experience his perspective the story coming out 2012 playstation 3 xbox 360 and pc perfect there you go destructoid this is uh this is my game of the show uh because i can't keep on picking oh, you thank yeah you. no it thank is you. so uh keep watching the front page destructoid <laughs> no wait <laughs> that, woo, woo.